Hey, what's up, y'all? And welcome back to Keep It Techie, where I help folks get into tech and navigate the world of Linux like a pro. I'm your host, Josh, and today we're talking puffins, but not just any puffin, Ubuntu 25.04, Plucky Puffin. Now, before you laugh at the name, yes, it's puffin, and yes, it's plucky. This release packed some serious punches under the hood. Canonical dropped a lot of changes in this version, and we're going to break it all down. So whether you're a Ubuntu fan, distro hopper, system admin, or someone just trying to stay ahead in this tech game, this video is for you. Also, quick side note, this release is dedicated to Steve Lagasek, a major contributor to the Ubuntu ecosystem. And much respect to him and everything he built behind the scenes. RIP and thank you for everything, Steve. So let's dive into this release. All right, so I'm at the release notes page. And of course, I have the link down in the description of the video so you guys can check it out for yourself. I'll just give you guys an overview. But Ubuntu 25.04 isn't a long term supported release. It's got a nine month life cycle. And so the ending support will be January 2026. That means if you need long term stability for production, you might as well stick with 24.04.2 LTS. But if you like living on the edge or testing the latest packages and seeing where Ubuntu's headed, 24.04 is calling your name. First up, upgrades from previous versions are currently on hold. Canonical found a couple issues, specifically around QD dependencies and foreign package removal from disabled sources. They're working on it, but if you're trying to upgrade today, maybe chill for a minute and wait for that green light. And I know I'm a little behind on my video, so this may have been solved. So just check to see if you can upgrade. It'll let you know on your system if you can or not. But this release ships with Linux kernel 6.14. And I tell you, it's stacked. The new schedule underscore XC lets developers implement custom schedulers using eBPF in user space. That's next level flexibility. Also shout out to the new NT Sync driver, making Wine and Proton even better for Windows gaming on Linux. And for my low latency audio video folks, they retired the dedicated low latency kernel. Now it's all about the generic kernel plus a user space tool called low latency kernel that adjust grub for responsiveness at boot. So that means it's cleaner and more flexible. Now we also got system D 257.4. It drops UTMP support, which breaks the who command until core utils gets rebuilt. C group version one is on its way out. And if you're still clinging to system V init script, it's time to move on. That's officially deprecated now. Now also networking got a nice upgrade with NetPlan. Now supporting things like WPA-PSK, SHA-256 Wi-Fi, and better online waiting behavior with DNS. And this all comes with NetPlan version 1.1.2, which is included with this release. Now let's highlight what I think really matters for most of us in the Linux community, and that's toolchain upgrades. It's crazy. You name it, it has been updated. Like GCC 15, Snapshot, Python 3, 13.3, also Rust 1.8.4, also Go 1.24, LLVM 20, and also OpenJDK 24 with 25 early access, which is super dope. And they're even adding new snaps for spring development, which is huge for Java devs building containerized apps. Now, they also added a new app armor profile and it's set up for a sandboxing. And these new profiles are aggressive in a good way. There's more sandboxing, less risk, but heads up, it could break stuff if your apps weren't ready. Canonical's encouraging everyone to report breakage and tune their local overrides if needed. They even introduced a specific profile for BRAP, which is sandboxing tools often used in containers and flat pack environment. Now also heads up for system integration. Ubuntu is phasing out the old ETC time zone method in favor of the system D style ETC local time 
which is more compatible with modern desktops. But if you have scripts out there that rely on that old way and it's looking for ETC time zone, then you need to update those. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Now, one thing that's a big upgrade and I have it on the screen right here is that this latest release comes with GNOME 48 and it comes with Ubuntu's triple buffering support built in and the default PDF viewer is now papers replacing events also terminal switching got easier with xdg terminal dash exact and there's also support for jpeg xl which is now native and no extra installs in order to get that working. There's also a brand new official ORM64 desktop ISO that you guys can check out. And that means better support for VMs, ACP, IE, EFI platforms, and even Snapdragon based devices. I mean, Ubuntu is getting real serious about ORM. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out, they now have VA API support and it's now built in. So your screen recording video encoding and GPU accelerating workloads just got a huge boost, especially for folks using OBS or FFmpeg. And for gamers, Dynamic Boost is now enabled by default on supported laptops. So more power gets routed to your GPU while gaming. And that's if you're plugged in, of course. Plus there's full support for the new Intel Arc Battlemitch GPUs. And this includes improved tracing and hardware accelerated video encoding. Now, let me go down and switch over to my virtual machine. I wanna show you guys a quick install so you can see the new installer that's included, the enhanced installer and boot experience. And we could quickly go through that. I'll just breeze through it because as you guys know, it's super simple to install. All right, so I'm booted into my virtual machine. This is Ubuntu 25. So let's go through the install real quick. First thing, choose your language, accessibility in Ubuntu. You can click through that if you need to. Keyboard layout, of course, connect to the internet. You can do the interactive installation or the automated. I'm gonna do the interactive default selection. This will get you the essentials, web browser and basic utilities. You can do the extended and offline friendly selection of office tools, utilities and web browsers, all that stuff. I'm gonna just do the default selection. You can do install third party for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, download and install supported for additional media formats if you need to. I'm not gonna do either one of those because this is, like I said, just a virtual machine, so it really doesn't matter. Erase this, or you can do a manual installation. No encryption, you can encrypt if you need to. Let me show you guys the advanced options. So we got LVM with encryption, ZFS with encryption. It still shows experimental. I'm wondering when they're gonna remove that because that's been there for a while with ZFS experimental. So I guess they still working out the kinks when it comes to ZFS but I'm gonna go with no encryption. Let me see if there's something else down here. Oh, use hardware backed encryption. That's cool to see. So the TPM, that's if you have EFI enabled. And right now I don't have this yet. Yeah, this virtual machine's not set up with EFI. I didn't set it up that way. All right, let's go down and set up an account. I'm gonna just put 25.04, which is fine. And let's create us a super strong password. And it looks like I did the passwords differently. All right, there we go. So require password on login is fine. But you also have an option for an active directory so you can add it to an active directory. Pick your time zone, good to go. And let's go on and install. And as you can see, the installer is super cool now. It looks so much better. You can look at the terminal and see what's actually going on. And you can go back here and just look at the like little window as it's going through. But we don't have to look at the desktop. I just want to walk you guys through the install real quick. But while this is going, let me give you my thoughts. Ubuntu 25.04 isn't some flashy, game-changing release, but it's quietly the foundation for the next few years. The deeper kernel tweaks, 
the developer focused snaps, the app warmer hardening. It's all about getting serious with stability, security, and performance. Now, with that said, it's not perfect. The upgrade bug is annoying. And if you rely on legacy stuff like system B scripts or niche tools that don't play well with newer app warmer profiles, you're going to hit some friction, but overall it's a tight forward thinking release, especially if you're into software development, running containers, or want a secure system without switching to something like Cubis. And one cool surprise, Fish Shell version four, now rewritten in Rust. If you've never tried Fish, this is a great time to switch. It's smooth, intuitive, and now more powerful under the hood. I wouldn't recommend this for production servers. Stick to LTS for that. But if you're learning Linux, tinkering, or testing the waters before Ubuntu 26.04 LTS drops next year, then plucky puffing is a solid move. So that's it for Ubuntu 25.04 plucky puffing, a quirky name for a distro that's quietly making big moves under the surface. If this video helped break it down for you, drop a like, subscribe to the channel and share with anyone that may be interested in staying sharp on these new distro releases and let me know in the comments are you planning on running plucky puffin or are you just going to stick with the lts i know a lot of people just mainly stick with the lts's some people like to jump out there into the deep waters and just play around with these cutting edge releases which is fun sometimes but either way keep learning keep building and most importantly keep it techie catch you guys in the next one peace Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.